Um, so you can see there the bone. Uh, I just keep working it around to the other side here. There you go. Give you a nice, a nice roast right there. Um, you know, again, depending on the size of your family, what you want to do. I uh, want to make cut some off of this side, make bigger one, you know, smaller one, whatever you want to do. But that's some nice lean meat right there. That is. That looks really nice. Nice, nice meat. Mm, excuse me. Um, I'm gonna set this over here now. Um, this is the loin has part of the neck roast on it what we call a line back strap whatever I'm gonna take and cut this off this is uh, part of the neck now you could take that right there and uh, cook that up right like that mm -hmm. if you wanted to that'd be good eating real good eating right like that um, I take this this section here you can see that like sinew almost that spinal Probably spinal cord spinal cord like I'd take and cut that out of there um, there's different ways of doing this. Uh, you can see this here, this silverish stuff down through there. That's the sinew. Uh, that's what the natives used. Um, people still use it now for, you know, thread, needle and thread. Um, all kinds of stuff, you know, bowstrings, um, all kinds of stuff. It's really strong. It's really yeah. cool stuff. Um, taken right in underneath there. I just taken. I just run right down along there. And I'll do the same here. And I just take it. Work that off. Jonathan has used the sinew and just dry it and. And then pull the fibers apart. Yeah, I've used it too. Yeah. I'm just taking, you know, there's thin fibers. You can almost see the fibers yeah. running there. Hopefully you can see that. Like fibers running in there, and that's the sinew. Now, if you're going to use this and you got them pieces off of there, you want to make sure you get the meat off right away. Um, take this here, and you can just take it and take your knife. And you just take that and just pull it right down along that piece. Hamburg meat. Yep. <laughs> it's good meat. And you just take and clean it off. Clean your your all that meat you want to get off of there before um, you know before it dries. Yeah, because it'll ruin the it'll, sinew. Yeah. So you know that's not that's not clean enough. I, I'd I'd if I'm gonna use this, I'd want it to look basically like that right right there yep. you know no no meat on there but I'm not going to use that right now and that's something that you can use like if you would brain tan the hide like we had mentioned you can actually use a sinew to stitch clothing moccasins bags whatever so mm -hmm. it's definitely um, you know you get a lot out of a deer yeah. or any animal if you're making like arrowheads your own arrowheads using that for your last year broadheads to the to the era um, stuff like that but I'm gonna you clean the rest of the sinew off of there I'm not gonna do that right now it takes a little time keep working it off but um, I'll show you now this here is uh, what I do if I was gonna make this into like a roast or whatever you can take and whatever might feed your family boom cut it there you go that's a nice, that's good meat right there. That's awesome eating. You won't have any more tender meat than no. that. What's good too is if you take that and you just take and slice it. This works a little bit better when it's like partially frozen. It's a little easier to cut. It's not rolling all over the place for you. But you just take and make real thin little strips like this. so on right down through there um, and you take that and fry it man that is some 
good eating. That's really that good is stuff. awesome eating right there. So, the, a lot of different ways you can do that. Um, roast, strips, whatever. We even wrap it in aluminum foil with seasoning and ma either maple syrup or molasses and, and um, just wrap it up that it's completely covered in the aluminum foil and then stick it in the oven like that and all the juices stay in the aluminum foil and re oh wow. Good it's eat. good stuff. <laughs> good, good stuff. Real good stuff. So, well, I guess that's about, oh, I couldn't show you this front shoulder, I guess. Um, and as far as the burger goes, all we do is just, I like, just cut chunks cut, of meat. Yeah. As far as burger goes, I just take and cut almost strips like this yeah. and uh, out of everything and uh, grind it up. Yeah. Use it for that way it fits right in the grinder. And as far as doing the canning part of things, like I mentioned, I'm going to can the burger. I like doing it that way because you can use it. It's bigger chunked burger. Um, so I don't have to go, we don't have to go through the process of cubing. You can cube it and do it that way so you have stew meat. But honestly, when I take it out of the can, if I put it in soups, it stays a nice size. If I fry it up, it gets, you know, you can break it up smaller. Um, it's really, you know, you know, useful either way. So you know to each his own and you can do it either way with what I'm going to show you in the next video on the canning all this fat um, right here you can take that and you can use that to make lamps out of now obviously what you do is boil that and, and uh, get the meat off of it and uh, actually if you take that right now and take that and boil it and uh, render that fat down you take that meat would cook off of the fat and you take that it's cracklings it's good eating real good eating um use that fat for like putting on your leather boots for sealing you know waterproofing them all kinds of stuff you can do with that um, you could make lard too yep. um deer lard isn't the tastiest bear bear Bear's better bear lard's the best Again, I'm just cutting this uh, fat off of here. Um, some of this other, like, know, membrane type thing, I guess is what you'd call it. This stuff here. Take and cut that off. Yeah, that's the stuff you don't want to get wet. <laughs> that stuff gets all slimy like and nasty. Alright. Um. Trim this stuff off. And the front shoulders, um, I pretty much always make into hamburger. Um, pretty much all the time. It's just what I do. Uh, not much for making roast or anything on them. You know, there's especially deer now. Elk or moose, you know, you can get a little more meat off of them. Um, you know, you can do more with them, but... So I'm not worried about, you know, how this cuts. You can just cut cut away on it. Um, now there's a, a bone that runs right down, right down the leg here. Right here. And what I do is I take and I come right in along that bone. Keep my knife angled in towards that bone. Come right down. And that's the joint right there. There's a joint right there. So pretty much I'm just taking and coming right around that joint. I'm right in against that bone. I'm, I basically all you do is follow the bones around. Um, take and cut right down to this bone. Take and get rid of that. Right like this, and just follow the bone. Might be easier for me to do it this way. Um, hopefully, you can see. Okay. Um, You're good. I just follow that bone right out, right out around, right, right there. And there's a piece grind up in the Hamburg, um, and. On the other side, you can do the same thing. Follow that bone in against there, right out. Come right up. Just like 
tendons and stuff in there. The be there's a lot of tendons and stuff in the front shoulders. Um, that's why it's better just grind in the hamburg. And then you come on this front again, just come right around here, right in here. And uh, just work that right around, right off the bone. Cut that out, and then uh, right here at this joint, right here, I just come in. Another bunch of burger meat right there. I'll cut that into strips, like I said before. Um, and then on this back side, I'll uh, just take and come in along the bone here. This is the shoulder blade. And I'm just taking and working that right off the... That's a little frozen yet. There. Basically, I'm just taking and trimming everything off. Um, like I said, I'm not getting fancy with nothing. Uh, I'm just taking and trimming uh, everything right off. I'm just cutting it right off the bone. It's all going into burger. Now I'll show you here. Uh, I'm gonna. Now that's not done. That's by no means done. I'm going to clean that off, but I want to show you how I do this top part, and then I'll shut the camera off. I'll clean that off then. Um, but out of the dogs. kitchen, kids. All right, right here, this joint is taking. Come right around, and come right around there, and then here, I cut in this back section. And cut that off. Go right by the bone. Follow the bone right down along here. Cuts off. That's a piece of burger. Um, right here. I'm doing holding it like this just to show you guys. Don't try holding it like this. At home. Slip and <laughs> cut your hand. Bad. Um, there you go. There's another piece. Nice. See, you can see all the sinew in there, all the tenon and stuff in there. That's why I grind all that up into Hamburg. Yeah. And make that edible. Otherwise, you'll be chewing it on it for a long, long time. And you just keep working around the bone. Keep, you know, going right, right around the bone here. And just working it right, right down, um, and so on. You know, just taking and. Now I wanted to mention something too. We have a really nice um, lamb. Uh, grinder that was gifted to us for Christmas two years yeah. ago yeah and it is a beauty um, so we have a hand crank and a world of difference yes this man has ground what two elk oh, how many oh, deer oh, I mean it takes elk. forever and it takes a lot of shoulder he is an ox but you know the other thing I wanted to mention though is it is good to have that crank grinder available that in the event that you don't have power, you don't have another means of grinding your meat, um, that you do have that. It may be a pain in the neck and we've become spoiled with our lem grinder, but mm -hmm. and it only takes a short period of time, which makes it nice. With us being off-grid and 100% solar, we do have to be careful what appliances we purchase um, and how much power they take and how long it takes for them to run. So to grind all this burger, it'll take only a few minutes, which is really nice. Actually, it takes longer to clean up the grinder than it does to use the grinder yeah, so so but I wanted to mention that you know it is something useful to have is a hand crank grinder in your uh, barrage of uh, appliances um, you can probably see some of my things hanging on the wall we use all the antiques out here and what is on our walls for decoration are not just decorations it's things we use and we pull off and use regularly so you know if you don't 
you know, hand, hand can openers, um, essential, you know, you got to think of these things. So keep that in mind, you know, when you're thinking about, um, maybe building a food cache and a, a stash of things, you know, keep in mind the things that you're going to need to utilize in the event that there is no power or that you're in an emergency situation. So, um, put that, put those thoughts in your mind. Yeah. So pretty much at this point, I got pretty much all the meat off of that that you're going to get off. Um, that's the front shoulder. So I'm going to confiscate that shoulder bone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So that's pretty much how you do that. There's not much to it. Um, takes a little bit of time, you know, practice. Like I said, I've been doing this since I was little. Yeah. So, you know, I've been doing it for a lot of years. Um, so, hope this helps somebody out and yeah. get something out of it. And this is something, too, that not only you should know, but your children should know, your wife should know. Because, you know, if you're in a survival situation and you need to eat, you need to know how to. That's why we did the uh, field dressing video. You know, this is knowledge for everybody. It's not just for men. It's for men, women, and children to know. And it's a good knowledge to pass down. Um, and also, the benefits of hunting...